Hi, this is a video to show how to customize finale documents so that you can do uh, Roman numeral analysis, graphics, and chord scales. So the first thing is that whenever you see uh, text items or items that are in green like this, that's because they're in the expression tool. The expression tool under the tool menu is right there, right? And it also looks like that symbol there in the tool menu. If you double click, you'll see everything that's in there. Now when you get a standard finale document, you know, there will be things in the dynamics and the tempo. There will be preset things. Um, but there will not be something that says Roman numerals. You have to create that by saying edit categories and create your category. You can call it whatever you want, analysis, Roman numerals, whatever. And then you simply choose a font and you start programming. So here's I'm saying create Roman numerals. I would then type in whatever I want, you know, um, the uh, symbol that I need, uh, say this would be an inversion of 5, 7, of 3, for example, right? And then it gets added to the library, and then if I want to set a shortcut for it, this is very important because um, it can be very time-consuming to have to keep going in and out of this library. So if you sh set shortcuts, you can um, analyze a document much faster. And so I could give it any shortcut by holding down shift and hitting that shortcut button. So say I wanted to call this letter N, I would do shift, hold down N, and now you can see the N has appeared. And what that means is that I can go anywhere in the document. As long as I remember what that is, I hold down N, and click, and the symbol will appear. Now what I've done in this document is I've done a very intuitive shortcut a set, or pretty intuitive, which is to have all of these numbers correspond to diatonic major harmony. So 1 is 1 major 7, 2 is 2 minor 7, 3 is 3 minor 7, up to 7. And then I put the 8 is the bra the arrow, 9 is the bracket, um, the 0 is the dotted arrow, and then right below the 0, the O is the dotted bracket. I did it like that because I thought I could make that sort of little, that would make it easier to remember. Then I put under P, I did deceptive parentheses for when uh, a chord is not resolving as expected. Um, this key I made to be MI if you want to label something as a modal interchange chord. Now what I did here is I tried to relate some kind of logic. So I have a 1 major 7, and then the next one down is going to be the corresponding dominant chord. So 5, 7 of 1, 5, 7 of 2, 5, 7 of 3, 5, 7 of 4, etc. And then below that, I did the sub-5, five, sub-5 five of 1, sub-5 of 2, sub-5 of 3, etc. And then down here on this row, I did a string of common modal interchange chords in, in major keys. Now, I couldn't capture every possible modal interchange category, but I, got, I tried to get the most common ones. Now, if a project was different, um, and I knew I was going to be in minor key harmony, for example, I might uh, preset these numbers to be uh, diatonic minor key chords. And I might have, you know, something, uh, you know, something else here. Like I might have more common composite minor borrowed chords or something like that. Um, so you can set those with that shortcut again by being in the expression tool and uh, choosing what you know, giving giving yourself a shortcut um, and hold, holding down shift and hitting the key. For example, this flat two major seven right now is X. So if I hold down X. I get flat two meter seven. Okay, that's how you do, that's how you make the expression library for analysis, and that's how you set shortcuts for it. Um, the next thing to learn is how to do chord scales. So chord scales are written in usually in whole notes, and then you have dotted, you have solid note heads for harmonic avoid notes. Um, so what you have to do is I've got I've got a measure here to show you. This is a measure of four four. What you have to do first is change the measures that you want to be uh, chord scales by double clicking and then changing the number of beats in the measure. Now, if the, if you want the chords, if it's an if it's a seven note scale, meaning uh, the eighth note would be the the octave of the scale, so like a major scale, you have seven notes and then the eighth note would be the octave. You probably want to have eight notes. If it's a if it's a diminished chord scale or something, you know, that has eight notes in it, then you want to have nine so that you could have the, the doubled octave, you know, the, the octave root. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to just do an eight note scale, like a typical, it would be a seven note scale, but plus the eighth note is the doubled octave. 
And then I change the duration to whatever I want to show it. I want to show it in whole notes. So I go to whole notes. I say OK. Then, oh, and by the way, it'll show 8.1 unless you do this other thing. You say more options and you say use a different time signature for display. And then you choose 4.4 four if you want to do that. If you want it to look as if it's 4.4, four, but it's displaying, it displays as if it's 4.4, four, but it's got eight eighth notes in it. So you say, OK. So now it just looks normal right there. OK, now you, what you do is you can put in your chord scale. Like, say I was doing um, G Mixolydian. It's, it's almost ready to go now, but we still need to be able to handle avoid notes, and we need to know how to label it. So here I am. I'm putting in all my notes. Let me move this text out of the way. And uh, the way we the way we label it is the best way to label it is with the lyric tool. It looks like this. You click on it, and you start labeling it. And you'll notice that I do have a harmonic avoid note. We're going to have to deal with it in a minute. Okay. Now I've labeled it. And now we have this uh, harmonic avoid note. Now what I did is I programmed into this library, I programmed a staff style that will change that into a solid note head. Uh, staff styles are handled by this um, treble clef. Now it's beyond the scope of this um, video to show you how to program a staff style, but I'll just suffice it to say that um, you can, in a separate video, I can, I'll can i make about that, but basically you can uh, create a new staff style by saying um, uh, define staff style and then tell it to make all your note heads solid and then you just apply that staff style with a shortcut. Now my shortcut right now is S, so when I hit S it just turns it into a solid note head. Okay, so once you've got all this stuff in your document, you now have what's called a library. And the library can be saved. If you go there, you can say save library, right? So if I was saving all this, this stuff that I've programmed in, click on that. And then I go in and I choose whatever aspects of this are unique or important. So one of the aspects of it is that... Um, is the uh, shape expressions, that's the arrows and stuff, and the shape uh, text expressions, right? Got to save those. And then the other thing I might want to save is the staff styles because that's where I programmed that solid note head. Let's see where are they, there they are, okay. So I am now going to save this library and I'm going to call it um, analysis and chord scales. And I'm doing that to remind myself what it, what is it that I did, you know, what would be useful about this library. And then you'll notice that when I go to save it, it, it already selected, it went right to the libraries folder in the make music folder. You may not realize that's where we are, but that is where we are. If I click here, make it bigger, you'll see that it's in the Finale 26 under Make Music Application Support. It's under all this stuff. That's where you automatically went. And you'll see that I have a folder that I've created in that called My Libraries. And I would just say Save. So then when I want to, if I start a new document or whatever, and I, it's none of this stuff is in that new document, I can just go there and load that library, load library, and uh, now all that stuff will be in the library. Um, the other way to do it is to save your document as a template. So I could save as, call it something, you know, um, harmony document with chord scales, something like that. And then um, I would erase all the details of this of the uh, document. So I would get rid of all the notes and chord symbols and everything. But all of that, all of these expressions and everything would still be there under the surface and I could open it up as a new project and it would all be in there. So those are the two ways to handle, um, you know, uh, making this kind of work um, so you don't have to keep redoing this work every time you have a new document. Now the final thing I'll say is that if you try to share libraries, if you try to email them, this when you save a library like this, 
Unfortunately, most uh, email programs will interpret it as a virus. They'll think that it's something nefarious. So the only way to send a uh, library through the email is to compress it, make a compressed file out of it. Or, of course, you can send a template, no problem. I forgot to mention how to make the arrows and stuff. Um, you, we talked about how to make the uh, Roman numerals. So it's a similar process. You go to the expression tool, double click, and then it's, you go to say create. But instead of choosing the text area, you choose the shape area. And then you decide what your shape is going to be. And you decide on what makes sense, You know whether you're going to use a square, a circle, a curved line zigzag line, you know, whatever kind of basic shape you need. So say I was going to make an arrow, I'd probably use a curved line. And I go up to my shape designer, you decide on the line thickness, um, the line style, that's where you would be able to make a dash line. And then you might decide on an arrowhead. So um, I'm going to make this and then I'm going to add an arrowhead to it uh, by going up here and choosing one. And right now it's got one and maybe I could choose a different one. I could, uh, maybe I like this one better. Or this one doesn't, you know, and then you can see what it looks like. You can get a little preview. That's, that's the last one. This is the second to last one. That's a lot bigger, um, et cetera. You can get an idea of what it looks like. So once you've selected what you like, you say, okay, and then uh, then at this point, actually, I shouldn't have drawn that line yet. Let me get rid of that. Now I've set that. Now I can draw it, and I'll get the arrowhead that I programmed. Okay, so now then it's ready, and then you say okay, and then you can set it as a shortcut, like I've done up here. I've already got one. If I like this one better, I can just set my shortcut Shift 8 to hold down 8. I get my arrow.